Hello everyone, this is Lex from Dead Gentry Collectibles again, continuing the little cameo series of videos. So how do you tell if a cameo is fake or not? First of all, do not do, if you've ever come across this online, what's called the hot needle or hot pin test. Never, for any reason, heat metal and push it against a cameo. You can and will damage it, whether it's genuine or not. So that isn't a very good means of finding out about your piece. Don't try to melt it, you know, even if it is fake, it, 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 it's just not a good idea. Um, and fake or not, these things are beautiful. Costume jewelry is beautiful. Um, replicas are beautiful. There's no reason, even if you don't want it, someone else might, to ever destroy a thing. So don't do that. Don't heat up metal and press it against anything to find out if it's plastic. You're going to damage it. Another test I see people doing all the time with pearls, with cameos, with all sorts of things, is to test with your teeth to, to bite on, on jewelry and objects. Um, as, as if finding out, excuse me as I sit down, this very squeaky chair, um, to find out whether or not something is real in that way, as if um, biting it, well, it, it changes sounds, or because of the density, you can tell if it's synthetic or not. Again, uh, not a good idea. You could damage the jewelry. You could also damage your teeth. Uh, cameos are made out of hard materials. So that's not a great idea. Um, and some resins and plastics can be hard. So I'd avoid that. Let's, you know, most of all, ew. <laughs> Let's show some civility. Let's show some respect for these objects. And let's show some gentility. Uh, the, the, you don't need to, you know, let's have some self-preservation, even against, you know, germs. And putting dirty, unknown things in our mouths the way a toddler would is never necessary, especially in a public place of any kind. Uh, and yes, jewelry tends to be pretty dirty. If you're handling it, you're likely not wearing gloves. Who handled it before you? How much dirt is on it? Who wore it last? How much were they sweating when they wore it last? Has it been sitting in a jewelry box for 30 years? When, if ever, has this item been cleaned? These are all questions I, you know, when I see people at estate sales picking up jewelry to bite or thrift stores, they don't seem to be asking any of these very very pertinent questions. Uh, so ask yourself these questions and then don't put things in your mouth. What you need is a magnifying optics lens. You need a loop. Um, like what you see jewelers use, you can get them inexpensively online and you can learn how to tell when these pieces are real and when they're replicas, when they're recreations. Um, so studying the materials, using a loop, magnifying these things to look at them closely, that's the best and only the really true authentic way to tell whether these pieces are real and to find out how old they might be and what they're made out of. You'll be able to start telling the difference. It's not as hard as it sounds. So stones, gems, shells. One test that does work is they do tend, genuine materials like that do tend to not come up to room temperature. So when a cameo is cool or coldish to the touch, um, more likely to be real. Uh, synthetics, resins, plastics tend to be at room temperature or as you hold them, tend to heat up to your body heat, to your, your standing temperature of your fingertips pretty quickly. Whereas a lot of real genuine materials will not heat up to your body temperature as you hold it and handle it. So that's something you can look out for. The idea that you can hold a cameo up to the light to, and if you see through it, um, see the transparency behind it, that'll tell you if it's real or fake. Not always true. A lot of modern day resins and plastics are made much lighter now so that they'll pass that test. That test is not foolhardy. Another test which is no longer completely foolhardy is when there's a curve or an indentation in the back of what you think is a shell cameo. Now, if you think you're dealing with a shell, and there is a curve, then yes, that's a clue. Having that little thumbprint indentation, that roundness in the back of the piece, not the front, but an open back. See how this is closed? That's a closed back. It's completely covered in metal. Here, you have a slightly more open back. 
So when a piece is open with a shell and you think it's a shell and it has a curve, it needs to have that curve. That'll be a clue that helps tell you that it's real. But there are fakes that now even replicate those gentle curves and those indentations in the back. So it's again, not a foolproof test. I'm trying to think of all the other tests. It's, it's about learning these materials, learning what they're like, and then finding out as you're looking at them uh, what you're dealing with. Another test people use incorrectly is the weight test. People will lift a cameo and they'll say, oh, if it's heavy, it must be fake because that means it has base metals around it or the, the setting is a base metal. Not always true. These materials used to make cameos, some of them are very dense, some of them are heavy, and there's lots of different materials that are used in authentic cameos. So you might be thinking it's the metal that's heavy and therefore cheap or inexpensive, and it's actually the, the very authentic real stone inside that is heavy. So that can be misleading. Also gold, real gold. <laughs> Even if you can't find the gold mark, that can be a heavy metal. So the, the base metal weight test, it's not legitimate. Uh, and these things, biting them to uh, so many different materials, not even the same stones, so many different types of stones, types of corals, types of gems, types of semi-precious stones, and then different types of resins, different types of plastics and synthetic materials, bones sometimes. It's you're not going to bite something unless you're going to memorize, unless you're going to bite 150 things, different types of materials and memorize how they all feel in your mouth or some nonsense that's never going to work. Uh, it's a bizarre criteria to start with and it's just not very reliable. Go to a jewelry store, look at real cameos, right? Uh, go to a museum, go to a collector showcase, you know, patronize a museum, patronize a showcase, pay for your ticket, your $5 or $25, make an afternoon of it. These things are beautiful. There's no reason not to get to know them. You know, look at real ones, um, learn them, and, and compare them to fake ones side by side when you have the opportunity. You can handle both real and replicate cameos at jewelry stores, and you can compare them and you can look at them through a loop then you're going to be able, far more likely, given your experience and your background knowledge at that point, to know a real, a real piece versus a fake piece. So that is really the best, truest, the only way, uh, and the most worthwhile expenditure of your time for knowing an item's value in the future. Look at authentic pieces and look at fake pieces and get to know the difference. Watch some YouTube videos on artisans carving these throughout history. Um, there are great videos that show how these things are made. You can start to learn what the tooling marks on different materials look like through a magnifying lens versus what a laser cut piece looks like, which is much more modern because the technology is different. Types of materials used. So you have you know, onyx, black stone, sardonyx, amethyst. Uh, agate, banded agate, a bit more prized for its multiple colors. Um, aventurine, chrysoprase, jasper, bloodstone, carnelian, uh, tiger's eye, sard, coral, uh, many different types of shells. It, it, it's, it's kind of an endless list what these are made from. Uh, every piece here is costume jewelry is a reproduction. Another word for that is fake. So that's why I brought these pieces out. One of the most interesting things about these pieces, all three of these fakes, this little set here in acrylic, not glass, these intaglios, this piece here, which was my grandmother's, and this piece here, all from the 50s and all reproductions. So the inch, one of the re interesting thing is why am I showing you reproductions instead of my beautiful real ones? Get to know these very popular fakes. If you get to know these very popular fakes, you're going to have a better time later spotting them and spotting ones like them. These are sometimes referred to as the ponytail girls or ponytail ladies because cameos, historically, and in Victorian times, women didn't wear ponytails. They didn't pull their hair back like this. So that can be a clue right there that you might be dealing with a more modern piece or a reproduction. And you'll notice how one of these is just trying to be, it's not even trying to fake um, genuine materials well. 
See that? It looks plastic. It looks flawless. It looks laser cut and perfect. It's not really trying to fake a real cameo. It's trying to be a beautiful piece of costume jewelry. And it's doing that job very well. Versus a piece like this, which is trying to fake a more natural stone. You see the slight change in colors, the false tooling marks, the variances of translucency to that top layer, you know, these very sharp lines to mimic Victorian straight nose cuts. All of these things intended to make it look uh, more likely uh, like it's real, but it isn't. It absolutely isn't. This is a 1950s cameo and it is a reproduction. So how do you know that? One of the ways you know, these are rhinestones, not diamonds. This is not gold of any kind. It's simply gold toned. The back is not open. That can be a way to tell. Um, it is the ponytail girl. If I had my magnifier, I could look and see that the tooling marks are not legitimate. That if I look very closely where this, this top layer and this bottom layer connect where it would have been carved, that any marks that are there aren't following the design's curves and form. That's a way to tell a synthetic or a fake. That's one of the ways you can tell something that's been cut in a different way, say from a plastic or a resin. Also, if you look at the setting, so the setting is a very consistent just, just perfect oval all the way around. It doesn't follow the stone. See how the, this, this fake stone, this resin rises up and out of the setting? In genuine pieces, you'll see the setting made to rise around the curve of that shell or that stone. So the, set, the, the band of metal might be thin here, but then wider here, and then thin again molded around the genuine material versus something just being plopped into a perfectly flat, perfectly round oval. So that's another way that you can tell a fake. You can't always, there's something called the matte test, like does it reflect at you? See how this one reflects? And it is a plastic. So in this circumstance, that test does ring true. However, that is not a foolproof test. Again, there are stones that cameos are made of that are authentic that will reflect like this. They are not all matte. Um, some shells, most shells can be matte, but again, not all of them. It depends on the shell. So that's not a foolproof, uh, you know, holding it up to the sun and seeing if it reflects back at you. Not always a foolproof test to figure out whether or not it's a replica or a real. Here, this is a very famous one. See that Perry? And you notice how these lines, almost starting from a center point inside these, these base metal moldings, and then just striations coming out. You see the same thing on my grandmother's 1950s piece. That's very 1950s. See, it's almost like a, it starts there and it's like a little starburst. You'll see that a lot. That can tell you it's a more modern piece as well. Also the clasp. If you're dealing with a brooch, you get a lot of extra information out of the clasp. Older pieces, whether they're costume jewelry, which is still worth money, um, just not as much as an authentic cameo, not as much, a reproduction that is an authentic materials is not worth as much as a real genuine natural materials, you know, artisanally made cameo. But older pieces, whether replicas or real, you can tell their age a lot of the time, this is a revolving clasp. It's one of those little clasps that you just flip over and then the needle pops out and then you can close it back up by revolving that piece. Modern, more modern. Solid metal clasps that are just attached without that mechanism, older. And um, that's one way you can tell. You know, um, tube metal clasps, which again, you can go look that up. That's gonna help date a piece and what period it was made in. Pins that extend, so when the needle extends from a solid piece of metal outside of the brooch or the pin or the pendant, um, you know, further than the metal setting it's in, like out here instead of in here, also will help identify an antique. So these are all things that are really gonna help you. And then, what else can I tell you? I mean, this is a lovely piece of costume jewelry. It's, a, it's acrylic, it's not glass. This is a um, faked intaglios, which are just beautiful. They are, they are charming. I, when these were made, 
cutting plastic. I mean, this was very entrepreneurial. It was a big deal. It was a new technology at that time. And they have these lovely costume, you know, the rope settings. So that helps date a piece. A setting, the style of the setting can help date a piece and tell you a little bit about its age. The figure within the piece can help identify a piece, you know. Um, I'm trying to, to to get an idea of, when we talk about the noses of cameos, that's something you almost need to get to know. You need to look at pieces that were made at certain times and then get very familiar with the designs of them. So very straight aquiline noses, that straight cut, that planed profile face, Victorian, that's a very Victorian design. That doesn't mean it wasn't made more modernly to look like a Victorian design. Generally, just very Anglo-Saxon, very Caucasian, European figures. Um, that, that can help tell you when a piece was made. Older figures, Roman figures, um, they, rounder noses, like stronger, like more bulbous. You can get to know that. And, and how do you know, right? You, you look, you look with a loop, you look and you get used to the different styles. You know, nothing here is worth more than 20 or $30. This piece is another fake, so you can get to know a fake, right? This is an Avon reproduction. So this is a piece of Avon jewelry. So you can get it up here to the light for you. I'm gonna get it to focus a bit. This is a piece of Avon jewelry from the 1971 Avon catalog. So now you can know what that looks like. And again, it is still, you know, it's not worthless, even though it's a reproduction. People like costume jewelry, and Avon costume jewelry can be collectible. Some people collect it. This little brooch would have, you know, um, was likely purchased at the same time. It would have had a little false dewdrops um, pearl seed, a little seed pearl here inside this leaf. These opened up. It was all the rage in the 70s. It would have a material on the inside, this brooch. Let's see if I can get it open for you. Um... Kind of like the consistency of chapstick. Like if you think of chapstick or Burt's Bees like lip balm, those sorts of um, lip balms. So when you open it up, you can see the little Avon inscription at the top there, the leaf. So it would have had like a chapstick consistency wax in here that was a solid perfume. So what you could do is wear your brooch, it was very big in the 70s, dab, you know, perfume onto your wrist or onto your neck. Close your brooch up right there on your lapel and you'd be wearing your perfume that you could reapply all day and you'd wear it with your, you know, your matching gold tone, beautiful Avon lady. So again, not worthless, still beautiful. Absolutely a reproduction. This is not made from natural materials. And I, I want to show you what the fakes look like and some very popular fakes. If you Google Lens any of these items on any given day, you will find five to 10 of them um, and you will find them listed from you know $10 to $120, I kid you not. So don't spend that much money on a reproduction. That isn't to say don't buy reproductions. Reproductions are all I wear. My grandmother's reproductions are among my favorite things to wear. I don't wear my real cameos. I enjoy reproductions. I don't have to worry about them. I don't have to be scared of damaging them. So to me, they are worthwhile. However, they are not the same value or evaluation, of, you know, of monetary worth as natural pieces that I leave in a display case. How are you going to go about valuing these things as you're trying to figure out their dates? You, you find the worth of any metal and gemstones involved in the setting. Look into the age of the item. If it's a brooch, again, you can tell a lot about the period when the pen, pin mechanism on the clasp was made. You know, is it an older tube style? Is it a C clasp? Is it a rollover? These are all things you can Google and become familiar with modern, much more modern when it's a rollover like the pieces I showed you here. Less valuable metal is more likely to be a, a replica or costume jewelry. Not always, but usually. Some of the antiques, um, let's say a face is left and it's real, that's a, worth a little bit more if the figure face is left because 
figures carved to face right, there's simply more of them. So that's a slightly rarer item worth a little bit more. Male figures are worth a little bit more. Scenes that depict mythology, depending on the date, worth a little bit more. Scenes that don't depict uh, figures, faces, or well-known myths. So the oddball scene of say someone sewing in a garden or something strange like that because of its rarity. Again, possibly worth more. Different colors. Um, used to create different details. So when you have, say, a, a banded piece of agate and instead of just two tones, maybe you have three or four and the, the artistry involved, had the carving created, you know, maybe her cloak, her, her robing is in a pink, her face, neck and hair are in more of the white shell. Maybe brown, there's a brown band that's used to show a tiara or something along those lines. So that can increase the value of a piece. Different colors, different layers, uh, the detail, the depth of the picture. If there's paint, because there's painted cameos, you don't want it flaked, you don't want it chipped. Cracks, chips, always check hold them up, even costume jewelry. Nobody wants to wear a cameo that is damaged or ugly or missing its nose or scuffed really badly. So that's going to decrease the value. Other important things for evaluating cameos, you know, do you like it or not, right? Um, I love the false four stone lady. I, I love the ponytail girls. They're completely fake, but I love them. So that makes them valuable to me. Um, but never, you know, at these prices that I see online that people are buying them for it, you know, $60 to $120 simply for, you know, replicas. They're not having these pieces evaluated and, and they don't know what they're buying. What else is not as valuable? If you have what's called a composite or um, sometimes called, you know, a contrast cameo, when they're carved, not of one material, but of two materials that are then connected with adhesives, like glued together. So like the white glued onto a pink or a black background, something along those lines. Again, look at it through your, mag your magnifying glass, right at where the two pieces were connect would connect. You can tell. You can tell when two pieces have been glued together or when two different materials are being used. That can reduce the value quite significantly. And exa examining these things with a loop will show you that, will show you composite cameos instead of single material cameos. So real shell, real stones, real gemstones, precious worth, uh, gemstones worth more, glass generally worth less, resin and plastic worth quite a bit less monetarily. If the piece is damaged, it's worth less. Patina and age do not increase worth on these items. Cameos do not work that way. As I said, these are all mock-ups of Victorian designs. Uh, you can get into, you know, if it's a mythological figure, if you know it's genuine material, if it's coming out of Greece, probably between the 18th and 20th century. That's a huge span of time. You're gonna have to refine it down with other clues. Uh, you know, big noses, Roman noses, mid 1800s, possibly if it's not a recreation. Um, fancifully cute, you know, little button noses. Sometimes they're called the pert, the little turned up nose instead of the Victorian straight line nose. That's more 21st century. That's the button nose is a 21st century modern design style. So when the artists go to cut into these things, they tend to use that. That can tell you it's a bit more modern. You know, and you're going to get to know the difference between the technology used. You can tell the difference between something that's a laser cut, more modern, you know, something that's Art Deco and its tooling marks. Um, anything th that can, you can start to spot as differences between these pieces will help you date them, will help you find their values. You know, and especially with hard stone, if you have a beautiful hard stone piece, the finer the features, the sharper, the deeper the detail, the better the cameo, the more valuable to a collector who's willing to pay for that cameo. Um, and then there are other terms like habille, H-A-B-I-L-L-E, you know, that, that's a French word, habille, cameo, cameo, habille, uh, referring to, you know, 
cameo is adorned with detachable jewelry. So when you see like a, a cameo face that's actually wearing little sterling silver earrings like on top of the face, or maybe a little diamond collar tiara on top of the figure, um, that, that can help date a piece. Those were very, very popular in the late 1800s and early 1900s. So all of these things I hope can help you in some way. I wanna give you one more close up shot of these three, you know, 50s. Remember the ponytail girls from the 50s, the Avon from the 70s. Let's see if we can get these really close so that you can just take one more good look at very popular um, replicas. Get to know what the replicas look like. That's going to help you later. All fake. Different styles, some made to look fake, some made to look real, but all replicas. I have this charming little music box here that I found the other day. I haven't decided whether or not I'm even gonna put it in the shop. I think I'm gonna let it play us out though. So I'm gonna wind it up because it's a lovely little thing. And one little last question, the plate. What do you think, French, hmm? Italian, <laughs> English? Here's something else you can get to know, just another thing that happens to be on the table. What do you think the piece is? I'm gonna turn it over, are you ready? So this is 22 karat gold. There's a hint, Bavaria. So now you kind of know what that looks like. Very, very cool.